Thank you. Welcome to this meeting of the Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization Unified Planning Work Program Committee meeting. Um, now read this meeting to order. I'll start by reading the virtual, or excuse me, the notice of non-discrimination. Um, you are invited to participate in this transportation planning process, regardless of your color, race, national origin, including limited English proficiency, religion, creed, gender, ancestry, ethnicity, disability, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, veteran status or background. Um, now I'll read the virtual meeting guidelines. Um, all participants will join this meeting with muted microphones. Um, on Zoom, please rename yourself to include your first name, last name, and affiliation. Uh, participants may mute and unmute themselves. Please do remain muted unless you're actively speaking. To participate in the discussion, you can select the raise hand function by clicking on the participants button at the bottom of the screen and the window will pop up with a raise hand button at the bottom <clears throat> or the reactions button in the toolbar. And I will then call on participants. If you're on the phone, you can use star nine to raise your hand. And if you have any technical difficulties, please contact Aaron McGuire in the chat box by email at emaguire at ctps.org or by phone at 857 702-3681. I'll move on to the accessibility statement, which reads that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, it's also accessible to people with disabilities. Zoom products are compliant with exceptions to web content accessibility guidelines 2.1, level AA standards, and revised section 508 standards. And again, if you require any additional accommodations, please contact Erin McGuire of MPO staff via the chat box or by email at emaguire at ctps.org or by phone at 857-702-3681. Thank you. Um, and with that, we can move on to our first agenda item, which is introductions. So I'll just go down here and call the roll. Um, uh, Mass.OTP as chair. Um, I'm Derek Krabat, manager of MPO activities from, from Mass.Present. Um, MAPC. Good afternoon, Eric Barassa with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, the city of Arlington. Seeing one. Uh, city of Boston. Uh, Framingham, Metro West. Town of Medway for the Swap region. City of Newton. David Kozis representing Mayor Fuller in the city of Newton. Okay. Uh, town of Norwood. Uh, town of Westwood. City of Somerville. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Tom Bent, City of Somerville, representing Mayor Ballantyne uh, and the Inacaw. Um, RTAC. I don't think it's, excuse me, Advisor Castle here. Okay. And see, we have Amira on from the MBTA Advisory Board. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Amira Patterson, MBTA Advisory Board. Excellent. Um, is there anyone that I missed that is? a member of the UPWP committee. All right, seeing none, um, we can move on to the next agenda item, which is a summary of the February 16th, 2023 UPWP committee meeting. So I'll ask for a motion and second to approve this meeting summary. I'll make that motion. And I will second that motion. Okay, motion having been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions on the uh, meeting summary? All right, seeing none, I will call the roll. Um, ask that with TP, yes. Uh, Eric Barassa? Eric Barassa, yes. David Kozis? David Kozis, yes. Okay, uh, Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. 
Leonard Diggins. Leonard Diggins, yes. And Amira Patterson. Amira Patterson, yes. Okay, thank you. That carries. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, proposed amendment number one to the federal fiscal year 2023 Unified Planning Work Program. Um, I'll turn it over to Sri Lanka to, to go over this one and a, a proposal to waive the comment period um, and, and recommend that the MPO endorse this at their next meeting. So go ahead, Sri Lanka. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this meeting um, of the PWP committee. Today, I will be presenting a proposed amendment one to the Federal Fiscal Year 2023 UPWP. Um, at the end of my presentation, I will ask that this committee vote to waive the 21 day public comment period and vote to endorse this amendment as presented today. Next slide, please. Amendment 1 to the UPWP proposes the inclusion of an MBTA project, the Redline TOD District Framework Study. In November of 2022, the MBTA was awarded a grant by the Federal Transit Administration through their pilot program for transit-oriented development planning. This study will focus on leveraging concentrated development areas along the Red Line to fund capital development. Uh, the specific districts include uh, the area around the Quincy Center Station, uh, Alewife, and Andrew Station, among other potential districts. Um, for more specific information regarding this study and the potential work, um, please contact Jennifer Mecca. Um, I'll drop her contact information in the chat um, at the end of this presentation. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this project is fully grant funded meaning there's a net zero change to the overall budget of the UPWP. This also means that no MPO money is going towards this work. Uh, since this work will be done uh, entirely by the MPTA and not the MPO, we are requesting that the committee vote to waive the 21 day public comment period for this amendment and subsequently vote to endorse this so that the T can uh, commence their work formally. Um, so with that, I will ask this committee, please, uh, vote to waive the comment period and vote to endorse, um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Thanks, Jaleka. Yeah, we were um, contacted by the FTA when the MBTA received this award. Uh, for it's a, it's a planning grant, essentially, and so there's a requirement that it be shown in the UPWP, similar to how if a construction project is awarded through a discretionary program, we'd have to show it on the TIPS. Um, so it's really just a you know, somewhat of a of a formality that it appear in the UPWP. It's not um, cutting into any other task budgets. We'll just show it in the appendix, um, but having it in the document is a requirement for the T to actually access the funds. So in that sense, you know, OTP is comfortable with, with this and, and with waiving that comment period just because of the nature of this, um, just being, being a requirement for the begin the work. Um, so are there any other questions before I ask for a motion and second to approve this? All right. Um, with that, then I, I will ask for that motion in second to, to I, I think the motion would entail um, the, the committee being supportive of this amendment and also uh, a proposal as recently um, kind of put into the PWP uh, uh, amendment process to waive the, the comment period. So is there a motion to both approve this and, and waive the 21-day uh, public comment period for it? Yes, Leonard. So in one motion, I'll, I'll make a motion to both to waive the public comment period and, and to approve endorse the amendment. Okay, thank you, Leonard. And Tom? I'll second that motion. Okay, great, thank you. So motion having made and seconded, just ask one more time if there are any questions, comments. So I pull up the roll here, seeing none. Um, so Derek Ravat with TP votes yes. Uh, Eric Barassa. Eric Barassa, yes. Okay, David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Leonard Diggins. Leonard Diggins, yes. And Amira Patterson. Amira Patterson, yes. Okay, excellent. So that carries. Thanks, Jaleka. Um, so I think with that, the next MPO meeting, we'll, 
we'll include this on the agenda or next possible MPO meeting where, where it'll fit and we'll we'll proceed with presenting that uh, to the full board as well. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. So next on the agenda is a presentation and a preliminary discussion on discrete study proposals. So hand it over to Strileka again to talk through uh, this one, what was received on the survey and, and uh, sort of first cut at the proposed studies. Yes, thank you so much. Um, next slide, please. So at this point, um, I'll start presenting the broad universe of proposed studies for the federal fiscal year 2024 Unified Planning Work Program. This year, we have received about 76 studies through our outreach efforts, which included presentations at sub-regional committee meetings, a public survey, and a staff survey. So far, we have held three roundtable discussions with staff on the universe to determine internal priorities and preferences on studies. Um, I also presented the raw universe to the Regional Transportation Advisory Committee last week. And at that meeting, I requested that RTAC develop a recommended list of studies to ensure that their input is included in the final decision-making process. Uh, so throughout this discussion, um, I encourage you to refer to the PDF of the universe posted on the meeting calendar um, for today. Next slide, please. So the estimated budget for discrete studies uh, for federal fiscal year 2024 is $150,000. Um, there are a few reasons that this program is funded at a lower level um, as compared to previous years. Uh, the underlying goal of staff is to establish uh, systems for sustainable workflows that allow work to adhere more closely to the MPO's vision goals and objectives while still being responsive to developing needs throughout the year. To this end, ongoing program budgets have been funded at a higher level to support continuous MPO work. Um, and when we talk about programs, this includes uh, the Long Range Transportation Plan Program, the Bicycle Pedestrian Program, Congestion Management, and ongoing freight work, uh, to name a couple. Next slide, please. Um, based on these preliminary conversations that we've been having with staff, um, staff seem to prefer studies which can eventually be incorporated into ongoing work. So this is not without precedent. Um, the federal fiscal year 2022 baseline equity metrics discrete study um, was funded and now this, part, this is part of the ongoing work conducted by the transportation equity program. There are quite a few similar studies proposed in the universe this year. Uh, one of them being um, R2, Strategies for Environmental Outreach, and TE2, Applying Conveil to TIP Project Scoring. In these and other studies, the goal of proposing this work as a discrete study is to carve out dedicated time and funding to building out a new aspect of this program that will eventually become a regular part of program work. Next slide, please. Today, my ask is that this committee review this raw universe, determine your priorities for projects, and begin eliminating projects from this spreadsheet to begin refinement of this universe. Uh, in future meetings, my hope is that this committee solidifies, solidifies its priorities and begins developing a committee recommended list. Uh, to support that, I'll be sending around a ranking survey in about mid-April uh, to determine that final list of, of studies that we fund. Um, at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions um, that I can, and thank you all for your time. Thank you, Sri Lanka. Um, so there is that document posted on on the website, which which I have open as well. And I think yeah, we could probably just have a more of an open ended discussion at this point about themes that may have come through in that um, to give some direction on maybe uh, prioritize some of the 76 studies that are in that document. So uh, I see some hands raised. I'll start with David. Um, thank you. On the, the previous slide, I saw a word that I didn't know what it was, that word conveil, right? What, is there anyone that can say what that is or what that means? I can um, answer that if you want. Okay. <laughs> sure. uh, so, so conveil is a planning, it's like a software, it's through, um, and Mass Auto TP actually maintains a contract with Conveil. It's a transit planning analysis software. So it looks at changes in uh, route schedules and the impact that that has on access to de destinations. So 
we could see, for example, if we change the frequency of a transit route, uh, pretty real time, what the impact would be on the increase in the number of jobs you could access within a certain amount of travel time to different destinations. So it's a tool that CTPS has been using to look at um, kind of different transit planning scenarios for for the MBTA or other other RTs. All right, so I guess this is just highlighting one of the 78 studies that we'll be talking about and just indicating, I'm not sure like why this is exactly being highlighted right here. Uh, so this study is an example of uh, one of the uh, projects that have been proposed that we're hoping to, if it is funded, uh, to fold into ongoing program work uh, in the future after uh, the one year sort of discrete study period is ended, this is something that um, staff hope to incorporate more thoroughly into their program. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Leonard. Oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. So, so then this study, how, first off, a preliminary question. This is the same spreadsheet as we saw last week, right? Yes. So, so there are lots of projects that don't have a cost associated with them, yes. right? Okay, fine. I mean, so this one did have costs associated with it, no? Um, I don't have to shoot the, the PDF open. Oh. Yes, it does have a cost associated with it, um, an estimated budget, 70000 Okay, so then if it, so that would be 70000 from the 150000 that we potentially have to spend. Yes. Okay, so then if it were to continue in succeeding years, me, then that would be $70,000 less that we'd have to spend in the next years? Yes. Okay. I think so, yes. So then, so then, so then we're down to like, like eighty dollars to $100,000 to spend potentially a year. I mean, I don't know whether to be depressed or relieved, you know, because I mean, on one hand, it's like, I mean, there's really hardly anything, you know, um, to spend here, you know, and so, so I guess it could make the selection process really easy because all we have to do is like pick one or two studies and we're done, you know. And I know it's not your fault, you know, that we we have so little to spend. I mean, I mean, I, I understand why you're doing what you're doing, you know, and and in, ter in terms of me enrolling, you know, me continuing some programs and funding funding them. I'm not saying that very clearly, but I mean, I understand, you know. The rationale and I, I I agree with it, but it doesn't really leave much um, for us to um, to do. It uh, uh, so anyways, um, but there are a lot of good studies here. It uh, uh, I'm glad we had had a lot of good input um, from people. It um, especially the staff. So so um, that's it. Thanks. Slide. Um, Betsy, and then Annette. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something to Len's question. Um, if we were to spend say seventy thousand dollars on the conveyal study, it would that work would be in future years would be rolled up into, for example, the TIP program. It wouldn't be that we would be funding the conveyal at seventy thousand dollars every year with UPWP study funds, and so you'd go back after fiscal year twenty four, you go back to having the full hundred fifty thousand dollars available. So the idea is to like use the the UPWP study funds as kind of like seed money to get a, a certain aspect of 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 our our planning work going um, that maybe needs kind of more intensive work. And then once we once that study is finished, that work would then be funded under a relevant program, not under UPWP study funds. Does that make but, sense? Yeah, it does. Because I thought it was going to be more like the the multimodal studies, which which are coming out of. You know, UPWP money, right? And so every year we we program a a, a corridor or study or two, and, and those are UPWP monies, right? No, so those are now in our multimodal. I think it's a multimodal infrastructure program. So if we remember last year, we shifted over from moving the corridor studies to being fully funded under its own program, which is separate from the UPWP study. Oh, really? Okay, so so then, so I now okay, so I thought they were coming out of UPW funds, because because that was to me kind of helping me to understand where, why the, the, the amount of money that we have to spend each year just seems to be going down um, more. So now, and so, so it's just a, uh, a misunderstanding on my part, but okay. I'm glad I asked me and thanks for the explanation. All right, sure, thanks. No thanks, Betsy. Um, Annette? 
Thanks, Derek. Um, I, I just kind of want to clarify if this is all UPWP money, like everything we do is UPWP money. And so what we've been trying to do over the last couple of years is to expand the work that we do in our programs, because the, that's the work that is the MPO's core work that meets the federal requirements and that is consistent with the goals and objectives of the MPO. Then like that's that's really the meat of what we do. Then we have these discrete studies that come up that are kind of one off generally, um, except for the ones that Sri Lanka just highlighted for you that do end up getting rolled up into a program once we do that initial work to get something started. And so I, I think looking at it as, you know, this is UPWP money and the rest of it isn't, is, is not the way we want to look at the big picture of how we do things. And the reason why we're trying to expand our programs is to make sure that we're meeting the federal requirements, that we're spending the money it takes to do the work that we have established as priorities for the MPO, rather than one-off studies that, that could be very interesting and exciting and we all like to do, but may be detracting from some of our core work. Um, and I'll give one example. I think it was last year or the year before where we had a separately funded study that focused on equity that took all of Betsy's time and then Betsy couldn't do the core work in the equity program. And so we're trying to avoid that problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I was being sloppy with language. And so, yeah, I understand. It's all, it's, it's, it's discreet. So like after you spend all the money that you, you need to spend, then what's left over is discretionary spending. And, 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 and this time is 150K. That's the right way to look at it. Um, not... Yes, yes. And, okay. and so, and again, we want the discrete studies that we fund to be supportive of the core work that we do, right? Because that's our mission. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah and I, then I, I, go ahead. Sorry, go say, ahead. And, and then I was going to say one quick thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, I, yeah, I understand it's called coordination. Okay. Uh, but I guess how do we then maybe kind of be explore some things mean that might be outside of the core mission that could then influence what the core mission is? I mean, how do we build that capacity to do that into um, the process? Right, and that's that's part of what we use the discrete study funding for. Gotcha, okay. Right. All right. All right. Um, gotcha. I, I will also note that looking through the raw universe, a number of the studies that are proposed there are things that we would be doing in our program work. And so, you know, they might not get funded because it's something we do in our program work. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Eric? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think just in terms of trying to whittle this list down, I feel like there's kind of three categories of 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 uh, things here that I think we could quickly, you know, take off. So one, it seemed like there were a few just kind of like, um, almost like comments, not really like study ideas. And I, and I, I have to say, I think, you know, the reason we got so many here is because staff did a really good job of, of, of public outreach with this. And, um, and, and I know they did a, a number of sort of emails at, and, and the list for, for, for the NPO, its outreach list is growing. So I, th I think one, there was a, a few things here that didn't seem like really like studies, but were more like sort of comments about like improvements they would like to see, um, particularly around like transit. So I think you can take those out there. Um, there were also a few things in here that sounded like they were like requests for funding. It was like, um, you know, like, you know, we, you know, it's like a, it read like a proposal, like, you know, give us this money and we'll, we'll do this thing. And, and that's clearly not, you know, <laughs> we're not outsourcing the UPWP to, to, you know, to like people at MIT or, or something like that. Um, so I think that's a second category that, that we can, I mean, staff should look at that and say, oh, is that something that staff could, could take on or is that in line with, but, um, but I, I think that, you know, I think that can probably be taken out. And then 
The third area was like there were some things around like pilot congestion pricing. Like you know we, we you know we we can't pilot anything with these with these funds. We don't have enough money here. So I I think the sort of like kind of just comments can be taken out the the proposals and the and the pilots, and that can help whittle it down right away. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, that, that's helpful. I, I had a similar <laughs> kind of set of feedback, and I. I uh, had noted that as well, so um, totally agreed. Uh, go ahead, David. Uh, well, yeah, I guess Eric said pretty much what I was thinking. Uh, we have what does it say, seventy-eight or something projects and a limited budget that we could probably fund one or two or three projects. It just feels like it could take a really long time to go through so many projects, and I, I kind of think like every year we have many, many good projects, and it's already hard to decide right? What we want to fund. So yes, I, I, I was going to ask if there's interest in whittling it down. So yes, obviously there's interest. And, in, you know, I think Annette said some of the things that can come out and Eric. So I I guess I'm not adding anything new, but I'm I'm agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what would be helpful is a sort of list that is work that's being suggested to fold into an existing UPWP task as you know part of the existing program uh, like you mentioned in that and then where there might be room for the committee to weigh in on priorities for that like if it's a study that's in this raw universe that like may or may not make its way in if it's a hundred percent decided like if there's some wiggle room there because I think what's the budget I see that's in the chat too is it like 150,000 dollars just for discrete studies, but that doesn't mean the committee can't also weigh in and direct work that might be going on in existing programs, potentially using some of the information in this, in the, in the raw universe table. So, so I think like some kind of categorization of the table that what the 76 fish studies that says, you know, either remove based on, you know, some of the suggestions Eric and Nate and David uh, had agreed with, and then, um, you know, which ones are proposed to fold into existing programs and which ones are kind of in that discrete category. And that, that might help for the next meeting to have a, or next set of feedback to, to have a more streamlined like uh, set of feedback going toward each, each category. Yeah, um, if I could just jump in really quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. During our staff conversations, we also identified a number of studies that were interesting and there is interest in doing some of that work but they would largely not be considered MPO work they might be more of like MAPC related work or it's a project for the MBTA so we have identified um, a good chunk of studies that could we could pass on to our partner agencies if that is um, I can also note those down uh, in that like revised spreadsheet that I make to say we can't do this work can someone else do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. And in a, in a similar vein, I think, like if there are studies, like I had noted in some of my feedback that I, I provided that some of the ideas might be, they're interesting, but it would, they would have to have like an MBTA sign off, for example, um, or a mass dot sign off if it's something that would directly impact or the audience for it would be the MBTA or mass dot, like if it's from a member of the public, that would need to, of course, be vetted by by the MBTA and, and mass up first. So that's that might be another an additional category is like ideas that might be interesting, but we'd need to make sure that uh, the, the appropriate agency uh, is interested in the results. Um, Eric. So I, I'm so I'm so sorry if I if I missed this. Um, why do we only have 150,000 for discrete studies? I feel I feel like in years past we had more than that. Is it because we have a lot of continuing things? And that, maybe that's a question for you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's because we've been in increasing the size of our programs um, based on, um, some of it's based on the feedback we got during the certification review in terms of things that the um, federal government would like us to be doing more of. And then also we're, we're really investing in our modeling right now, developing the regional mm -hmm. travel demand model. So that's another part of it. So it's, it's little pieces here and there that all add up. Um, 
to increasing the, the program funded work, which then leaves less for the discrete oh. studies. Okay. I mean, I would say if, if we're working within a budget of about $150,000 for discrete studies, that we're probably looking at somewhere around two to three, right? That's probably what we're, we're looking at. I mean, instead of debating these and trying to whittle, 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 I would say maybe the best use of time is for members to say, what, what are your top three? <laughs> um, and maybe it's just focusing on that. Like, what do you, you know, what is everyone's top three? Like, don't, you know, we're only gonna be able to do like two or three. So um, maybe it's just, it's focusing on that, you know, typically we do a survey. I mean, I think we can, I, I think we can take out some of the things I, I had talked about. We could, you know, do a survey um, and, uh, or we could just come back, you know, next time with questions and start talking about like, you know, what folks think are their top three. I'm, ju I'm just thinking how, how can we pro be productive in, you know, what, when we usually have about an hour of time. Agree with that, and I think, in addition, like to my point earlier, so the I think the survey might it might be interesting to ask for rankings of both candidates for discrete studies and then candidates for existing programs, right? So there's proposals for both, and so if staff can identify which ones fall under existing programs, that might be a separate amount of money on top of that hundred fifty thousand. That if there is an interest in committee input on those, maybe voting on the or discussing and ranking those separately. So kind of like a two-part survey of priorities for discrete studies, priorities for tasks that might fall within existing uh, programs. Um, Len? Thank you, Derek. Yeah, and, and you're getting, I mean, you you pretty much said better than I would have, I mean, oh, what okay. I would have um, <laughs> wanted. I mean, I mean, the only thing I'll add to that is maybe a sense of how much, I mean, um, we can, you know, spend being or 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 and maybe maybe that's not the right way to think about it. Maybe it's to say that you know, these are the ones we really care about. But I guess we we can't do that without knowing more about the studies I mean that are in on those programs I mean and and the rationale for them being there. And my sense was that I mean, much like I me, mean, the um, big multimodal projects, I mean the staff had a much better handle. Being on those, you know, like the corridor studies, and they would pretty much bring back to us the corridor study they were planning to do because it just took so much more um, time and, um, and expertise you know, in order to make those conclusions. And, you know, so, and I was fine with that. I mean, but I'm also fine with us having to learn more and maybe even spend more time so that we can uh, make that kind of input being on on the program. So, so I like that, that idea. And I'll just say, I think one of the reasons we're here with this big universe, you know, even if we had like twice as much money to spend, um, it would still be a challenge. It's because the advisory council was like, you didn't show us the universe last time. You showed it to us like two years ago and we want to see it. And now we're seeing it. I'm happy we're seeing it. I really am because I mean, there's some, some, some really wonderful ideas in there, even if they're not for us to do. It gives you some food, food for thought, you know. Um, and so, 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 yeah, I mean, I think uh, ultimately we'll just determine like how much we can, what we know is 150 for the three degree studies, at least, and we can, you know, provide, I mean, whatever number of studies we think will get us to that number and bring them to um, each other in the next meeting. Plus, whatever you said, what you said about the programs, Derek. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Len. Uh, Tom? Um, I just wanted to, uh, basically everything I was going to say was just been said by uh, Eric, uh, Derek, and Len. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> but the, the only thing I might want to add is I, I would I would be very interested to see what staff thought too, as far as, because many times staff gives us their recommendations and that would be uh, helpful too, uh, you know, based on, um, you know, uh, what we've done previously. I know I've been doing this a long time and this was the, I think the largest amount of uh, requests that we've seen for studies uh, that I've seen in, uh, in all the years I've been doing it. Uh, and if we can whittle down, you know, like we talked about earlier, that would be very helpful. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, get it down, to, especially if we only have 150,000 to work with. So, uh, but I'd be, I'd be interested to see what have, staff has to say also, thanks. Great. Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, David? 
gosh, I feel like I'm just repeating what everyone is saying today. <laughs> but I like I like Eric's suggestion, and I was going to say exactly what Tom just said. And Len, I think maybe we should all just, or maybe I should, just spend spend a little time going more carefully through the whole universe and maybe coming up with my top five. And then at the next meeting, we could all say who, what our top five are and go through those instead of the whole like the entire universe and 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 the staff should be picking their top five too i think and you know hopefully we'll have some overlap i think that'll be a much better use of time sure yeah thanks david yeah uh, yeah it sounds like we're on the same page as far as next steps and and coming up with the way to prioritize uh, what's what's in here so um Sri Lanka, did you want to respond to anything? I, I, is there anything else that you might be looking for as far as feedback during this time? Um, so I just want to, I well, just want to make sure that I have uh, the right sort of uh, parameters for removing studies, and then to just briefly chat about timelines. Um, so the studies that I should remove. Um, or at least mark as ones that we should not really move forward with are ones that are comments, pilot programs, um, and studies that will need um, partner agency input or studies that should be just given over to our partner agencies. Um, and sending the second part of that, sending out a survey to the committee um, for ranking discrete studies and then also choosing studies that uh, should be funded within programs, but that the committee has an interest in um, following over their development. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, that sounds like a good summary. Um, I think there was one addition to the category of like congestion pricing as well. The things that might be more like decision points or mm -hmm. program impl like implementation of things that, that, that sort of at a different level or um, different jurisdiction that's that, yeah but other than that I think you, you hit on everything that that folks have mentioned yeah. great um and then in terms of timeline I have asked for the um advisory council to develop a like an RTAC recommended list by April 12th so that is in two, three in about four weeks is it fair to do you all think that you'd be able to come up with like a committee recommended list in that time too, given that I'll send out the survey um, and I'll at least develop, if not present um, a revised universe list? I think that sounds like enough. So, so once we have the survey, I guess when, so I, I think once we have a survey that has more will down options from there, I, I would hope it shouldn't take more than you know, one to two weeks for us to take that survey and review what's in it, um, if that makes sense. So if if the survey can be done in the next two weeks, yeah, and then we can all take that and come up with a top three to five before the next meeting, which it sounds like maybe, you know, mid-April, early mid-April. Uh, I, I don't know if we, and then I think you mentioned meeting on the 30th. At the MPO meeting earlier. I don't know if there's a meeting scheduled for that date for us. Um, not just yet, but I I can also make this sort of whittle down universe, send it out, and then before the 30th, uh, either before the 30th, send out the survey or after the 30th, where we have a meeting to discuss a more condensed version of this universe. Um, following that, I can send out a survey. Either one is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, to me, it would make sense to not really meet again until we have an opportunity to take a survey and really spend time with like each member maybe coming up with priority priorities. Um, and I, I don't know if folks agree, but I, don't, I, I know that we talked about having meetings that aren't the same day as MPO meetings as well. And next meeting is the 30th. If I don't know if April's Six, third. Might make well, sense as the next CPWP meeting date. For me, um, it's just like three, three appeal meetings in a day. I, mean, it's, right. it's, I don't mind this one being combined, you know, with the other meeting. It's just like three that just kind of um, mm -hmm. wipes my day out in me. 
Uh, and I love to stop. Sure. I mean, it's not like I don't like it. So, <laughs> so I mean, but it's really my my work day. I mean, that takes a hit, you know. Uh, but I am exhausted, you know, after three meetings. Right. No. No. Absolutely. But, but as far as the timeline, show, like, I, uh, maybe three weeks might allow enough time to do the survey and also have folks take it and and come back with a recommended set of study ideas. Um, yes. But I see a few hands raised, so maybe go through. Uh, I, Laura. Hey there. Um, so I had I heard one thing said in this conversation that I didn't hear summarized in the next steps, which was around um, staff making the connection around which studies already fit into things that they're doing and using that to cut the list. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that um, because I, I think if there are things that are on this list, which is a number of really interesting study ideas that are already something connected to something staff are doing or already likely to be folded in, then that would be a, a helpful cut to make before folks go through and rank the study ideas. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Tom? Uh, basically, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, I'd, I'd like to get a clean list so we're not going through 35 pages and, you know, 20 of them may be eliminated. Uh, so, I'd like to get that as soon as possible. And then uh, I, I guess I, I, I might be, and maybe I missed something, but I'm a little confused about what the point of the survey would be. Because if we just get down, if we got the cleaned up list and then we get, if everyone came in with their top five, wouldn't we just have that discussion or do you want to further uh, rank things uh, before we meet? Is that the, the point of the survey? So my my understanding is you're like I'll jump in if if I'm missing something, but I, I think the survey would reflect the cleaned up list. So the the cleaned up list, the whittled down version would match exactly what's in the survey. And the survey would just be the the forum or or place where you would actually indicate your ranking. So it could all be in one place for staff to have. But there would be no difference between what's in the survey and what's in the, the cleaned up list. Is that what you had in mind, Sri Lanka? Yes. Um, but also to Tom's point, if a survey is just one more sort of thing to do, that that forum to decide which studies uh, or how studies should be ranked and then ultimately which studies are funded uh, could also be a committee meeting. Um, I think that would be up to members. Yep, no, either way works for me. I just wanted to be clear uh, what we were, what the survey was actually going to be about um, and uh, getting the, uh, uh, I know in the past, you know, we've basically, especially again, we're not talking about a ton of money here. Um, so, in, in like we said, I think Erica, somebody said earlier, you know, one project may take a, a big percentage of it. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I, I, I could do it either way. Uh, and so whatever the committee you know feels but either way works for me but th thanks for the explanation though on it thanks tom yeah to me i think a survey is a good thing like it, it would be helpful to have a ranking before we meet next of what folks priorities are so we can see as we're discussing like what what some early input already is so that um we can discuss that offline as well Shreka. but um david um yeah i would I, would, I think it would be fine to rank your top five, but maybe not your top you know, 73 or something like that. Um, I was just looking at my calendar and the MPO calendar. I just wanted to point out that April 6th is Passover, which is yeah. an important holiday for me, maybe not for too many people. Um, I see that there's already an MPO meeting scheduled on that day. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if we could maybe try to avoid it if possible. Or, yep, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think I may have. I think there's also that. an ANF committee meeting that day scheduled. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So we can work offline about a, a date, maybe. Go ahead, Sri Lanka. Um, I just wanted to clarify that. I think, based on the uh, when to meet that I sent out a few weeks ago, I believe the agreement was to do alternating Thursdays from MPO meeting days. So if we met the 30th, um, our next meeting would be the 13th. So it wouldn't 
fall on Passover and it also wouldn't be another like three meeting day. Yeah, I, I may have mistakenly mentioned April 6th, uh, just like a quick glance at the calendar without, uh, so apologies for that. Uh, Amira. Yes, thank you. Um, I feel that this is a great discussion and that we're all kind of getting on the same page. Um, but in regards to the timeline, wasn't the timeline April 12th that you wanted the list? So if we had the 13th, we wouldn't really have time to discuss or get feedback before that date. Is that correct? So I have asked the advisory council for their list by the 12th because the ne their next meeting would be in early May. And um, I was just sort of based on internal kind of discussion, I was thinking that might be a little bit too late to make to bring back to the committee to then make um, a decision uh, just based on when, uh, based on the timeline that we agreed upon for last time. So if the advisory council has their list by the 12th, um, we can kind of share that on the 13th. Um, and if at that point we're developing a committee recommended list, I can aim to get a staff one done by then too. So then we can have sort of all of the recommended lists in one place. Thank you. Uh, Len? Ask her any if you know. So, um, so thanks. I'll make so by. I think we have a, yeah, thanks for taking care of Snob. Uh, so, um, so it's really like a, it's given that the advisory council has seen a universe made um, uh, and, and we're happy with that, it, it may be a little bit too quick for you to create the little down list for us when we meet next Wednesday. But maybe you could just like come um, prepare to um, give us input on studies as we start, you know, developing I mean, our recommendation. Uh, and as I said, if we could get I mean, some cost figures associated with studies that don't have um, costs associated with them, you know, that would be helpful. So uh, that's it. I mean, Absolutely. Thanks. thanks, son. Okay. So I just want to ask you if folks did review that universe. Just wanted to provide an opportunity if there's anything in there that was of particular interest or that folks might want to highlight as part of this meeting as to any direction for next steps. Hang on, I got through like maybe a third out of it. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Was that, did you have a comment, Lynn? Well, I was trying to find the one that was one that I really liked. I gave it like um, like, like stars, you know. L. Oh, L one opportunities for the MPO to support TOD. Oh, that's a good one, you know. Um, and that was a staff survey uh, question. Forty to sixty thousand dollars, you know. So generally, I think I'm going to be going me for the. The lower cost um, studies that are, you know, that do complement our core, me, but are kind of more basic science um, type um, surveys or, or, or studies. Yeah. So that's one that popped out to me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Len. Sure. Anyone else? Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Tom. I uh, just went, uh, when do you think you'll have the cleaned, uh, cleaned up? Uh, version out to us? So I will start working on this um, probably tomorrow. I can aim for middle of next week to get that cleaned up and ready to go in an email. Okay. And again, I might have missed it. Did, did we set a date yet or are we still talking about it? <laughs> um, I believe, so based on the survey that I sent a few weeks ago, I believe we agreed on Thursdays at one, but on alternating Thursdays uh, from MPO meetings. So if we didn't do the 30th, uh, the next one would be 13th. Okay, the 30th, we actually have an MPO meeting, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, there's not one next week, so. No. So it would be, yeah. This, so the question is, do you really wanna wait till the 13th, right? But it, does it have to be a Thursday? Can it be another day? It could be another day. This is just based on the responses that I got um, mm -hmm. from the survey I sent out. Okay. You come to our meeting on Wednesday, next Wednesday, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> We're nice. We, I got we a like hundred other ones to go on all week long. We well, said it's a different day of the week. We, uh, <laughs> we like Somerville. 
at the advisory council, you know. Um, yeah, so we, we're also going to be doing Tiffany scenarios, you know, so I'm not yeah. sure how much we can, uh, can try. So, to. I mean, it sounds like it would just be after the MPO meeting then on the, the 30th. Okay, that, I mean, that's fine right. with me too, yeah. Yeah, I think the current schedule is probably the 30th. And then hey, the Len, you're going to have to drink some Red Bull. That's well, <laughs> <laughs> fine, you know. This should be offshore. You're going to have three that day, huh? It's going to be a three, three meeting day? Sounds like it. On the 30th? Yeah. Right. I don't there think there's an ANF meeting on the 30th. Okay. All right, well, then get it. Yeah. It's only more, two. More so. <laughs> um, yes. I only need two Red Bulls instead of three. <laughs> um, okay, so so we'll plan the 30th and the 13th then. Um, and by the 30th, it sounds like we'll have at least a cleaned up list and potentially the survey out, maybe. Um. I can have the cleaned up list for sure. I can work to get the survey out before the 30th. Um, but then on the 13th of April, that'll be when um, I can present the results of the survey. Uh, the results, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll come prepared to discuss the cleaned up list on the 30th. The survey will like, likely be out then. And then on the 13th, we'll plan to sort of have a more final um, I guess discussion on on final priorities based on survey results and and prior discussion. So, okay, that, that should work well. Um, okay, well, I think we got our next steps down. Then um, I'm not seeing any hands, so I think we can move on to the next item, which is members' items. Are there any other items that folks would like to bring up? Okay. Seeing none, uh, can move on to seven, which I think we already talked about. So mm -hmm. I think we're good there. Oh yes, um, I did forget to mention actually, there is um, something I wanted to mention was that there was previously sent around a, a schedule of operations. Um, and I, I hear that will be being kind of phased out and instead there'll be a quarterly report on uh, UPWP activities circulated to the, to the committee. So. Sri so like, I don't know if you wanted to speak a little more to that. Yeah, so I will be sending out the quarterly report um, to the committee tomorrow. Um, and that will be for the first quarter of federal fiscal year 23. Okay. Thanks, Sri Any questions on that? All right, seeing none. Um, so next meeting will be on the 30th. Um, and materials will be posted before then. Um, and with that, I'll just ask for a motion and second to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'll okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Eric and Len. So I think with that objection, we're adjourned and we'll see everyone right, back you. here at 30th. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.